G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So, pretty exciting, a couple of things. Caps, they turned up yesterday, yes. which was pretty awesome. So, 40 channel on the front, Reef Monkey on the back. There's a whole lot of different colours to choose from. Anyway, that's enough of that, we'll talk about that more later. But even more exciting is I've been waiting for, I don't know, nearly six weeks for this to turn up, and it's turned up. So this has come from the States, it's from fjparts.com, and I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm hoping that all the parts are right, especially the gasket kit, because I just couldn't find the gasket kit for the 135 motor anywhere in Australia, and even online it seemed... Anyway, we're about to find out, eh, Jack? Yes. All right, let's cut it open. All right. Righto Jack, so as long as our new head gasket looks the same as this one, we're good. We're good. Let's see. Let's see what we actually got. Now I ordered, I ordered a whole lot of extra stuff um, because we're doing a big order. FJparts.com in the States. So for all you American viewers, this is your go-to. So in Australia, I've shared a whole lot of different connections with you guys. Onlineautoparts.com.au, uh, Mr. Land Cruiser is always a good source. But if you're living in America, or anywhere in the world actually, and you can't find parts, FJ Parts. Let's have a look. We've got a list of all our stuff. There's a big list. Okay. Right here on the top. Alright. I'm actually a little bit nervous. Where's that knife go? When this turned up, I had to get Jack down here because it was uh, exciting. Yes. Righto. Well, there's something about exhaust gaskets. It's not that I don't have faith in fjparts.com. I'm just double checking. What was that in there too, was it? Yeah. Oh, there's the other part of the exhaust gasket. There it is, Jack. Oh, it's time to overlay it. Woo! That's nice. Spot on. Old gasket. Oh, I'm starting to paint the new one before we even start. So there's the old gasket. There's the new gasket. For an F135 motor, I'm super happy. So that's really, really cool. We'll just uh, put those bits back in there. Now, let's check out what else we got. What else we got, Jack? A side cover gasket, timing cover, water cover gaskets, uh, new seals. Yep, so here's for our gearbox, full gearbox gasket kit. Lots of gaskets. So, oh, wind down windows, these are all our new felts and our new Rubbers, again, for our quarter windows. What do you got there, Jack? Um, what is it? What is it? Ah, uh, clutch align. So, clutch aligning tool, brake line hose. Clutch hydraulics. Now, this is, uh, I think this is an updated kit. Ready to go. That's really cool. Ornament, pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. Genuine Toyota. Careful, don't break it, don't break it. Oh, ooh. Nice, brand new. Check out that voltage regulator. So, look oh, at that. It's nice. Actually says manufactured for Toyota. How cool is that? What else we got in there, Jack? A speedometer cable. Brand new, ready to roll. Toyota pump. Pump, this should be the fuel pump. Open it up. Sticking out already. 
So again, this was quite difficult to find here in Australia, uh, an early model fuel pump. So again, I'm hoping this is spot on. I'm told it is. It's supposed to fit from a 1958 to 1967 fuel pump. It's got more snow inside. Look at that. There we go. Genuine Toyota. That is mint. It comes with the gasket, which is cool. What else, Jack? What else? It's a brand new little distributor clamp. Engine mounts. That's going to come in very handy. Hydraulic brake service parts. I'm guessing just... So your door plugs for your early model Land Cruisers. There's that little round plug that goes into them. Every one I've ever seen, they're always brittle, broken. Got some oil filters. Oil filter. So this is the uh, canister style oil filters that go inside the uh, F135 motor. Two. A tiny little rubber grommet. I can't remember what I ordered that one for, but we'll check that out in the order list. So what I'm most excited about is that head gasket. So yes. I'm really, really stoked with that. It's been quite difficult chasing up parts. I've been chasing everywhere. Um, and we're still chasing a few more parts, but we're pretty much right to go. I spent a fair bit of today ripping into that motor and just giving it a really, really good clean. So, so let's get into me giving it a really good clean up. So I'll pack all this back up in the box, keep it all safe so we know what it all is. Now something else really cool about fjparts.com when you go check it out, is that when you check it out, I found this really encouraging, is that at the top of their page they have a Bible verse, something a little inspirational every day. So that's really cool. So I found that really nice. The block, here it is. Still chasing up a few little bits and pieces for the block to rebuild it all. And who would ever thought that I'd be chasing up things like Welsh plugs or the little dome cups. They just seem to be a little bit tricky to find in this size. But in the meantime, we can really start getting this ready. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna clean up, we're gonna clean out some of the ports, we're gonna clean out where the Welsh plugs sit, and we're gonna start honing each one of these pots. Let's see how we go, eh? Again, a little one on the drill there, just give all these tighter spots, just a little cup. build up in some of these holes. So we're just going to try to break it all up with a bit of a scribe and then we'll run a tap and every single one of these holes so they're all nice and clean. These ones here go all the way through so we can just punch all that gunk out of it. Just so those holes are nice and clean. This little scribe with a hook on it seems to work really really well. Get right into the bottom of that hole and just start digging all that gunk and build up out. Then we can run a tap down there and clean it out properly. Right now, we're going to clean out every single one of these holes. We've got our little taps, and the awesome thing is, this is one of my grandfather's. It's always really, really nice to work on um, anything with my old grandfather's tools. Especially considering that this would have been a, uh, a pretty awesome vehicle back in my grandfather's day. All right, I'll just give all the holes a bit of a spray with R1. We'll just start running the tap down and cleaning them all out. You can see all the build up that's come out of the hole. 
So that's what we're just cleaning out. We're just cleaning out all the buildup of grease, dirt, grime, all that stuff out of these holes. And they come up like new. So this is M8. We're just going to work our way all the way around. All those M8s. And then we'll work through each, each other hole as we need to go. Now all these holes here are M6, so again we're just going to give them a good spray, some R1, just to lubricate those holes when we clean them all out. Now I'm lucky enough to have a gun tap for this one. What that means is not only can I throw it in my grandfather's tapping tool and run the tap through it, is that some time ago I actually modified this gun tap. The gun tap actually has a spiral like a drill bit. And I've actually uh, modified this one. I've actually ground down the three sides so I actually can fit it in a drill chuck. And then I can run these through on a low setting and you can turn your torque down on your drill, do that, or we'll put it on the lower setting. And then we'll just run the drill through nice and carefully through all of these and clean out these holes as well. Slow speed down. Turn your torque setting down. Right, I stop. So if you think this is a good idea, I'm telling you, it's not. <sighs> and I've just done the absolute worst example I could have ever done, ever. I didn't have the torque setting down low enough. I've just broken the tap inside that. So what I really should have done was skip the drill altogether and just kept stayed. I should have stayed with my grandfather's tap. That's really disappointing. Now I'm going to get that broken tap out of that hole. The reason I did this was to try to speed up the process and quickly run through all these and uh, now I've just added a whole lot of extra time to this project. <laughs> Unbelievable. First hole I tried to show you guys a little tip. And it obviously was not a tip at all. Bugger. Alright, let's get that tap out. Alright, so let's go back to the manual way. Grandfather's tap. End of tap. You just tap them out all by hand. Don't try and take shortcuts, it ends up taking you a lot longer. Time's come, we're going to hone out these balls. Now I have to admit, I'm not an expert on this at all. So I've just done a fair bit of research, I've spoken to a number of guys, and we had to go at the, uh, the number one, and it's come up really good actually. So what I've found is it's all a combination of speed and rhythm, get that speed and rhythm right and then we can get that cross hatching right and uh, yeah this one's come up pretty good but it needs a little bit more work the other thing we did is that uh, the inside of the block here was full of rust stacks of it so we've dug all that out cleaned it all out and then I filled up to the bottom of these Welsh plugs here just with some rust remover just to try to dissolve that last little bit that's inside just so the entire block inside is going to be nice and clean so the cooling system will work properly. Right, eh? Let's keep working on number one. Heaps of R1. really really happy with my speed and rhythm because the cross hatching I've got here is almost an exact 45 degrees and that's what they tell me it needs to be so check this out a little bit at the top there just needs a little bit more work but I don't know I think you might be able to pick that up on the camera that 45 degree sort of angle
Made it a bit easier as we stand up on your trusty milk crate. Right, uh, so this again is another big process. So, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think I'd ever rebuild a motor again. Um, I think I'd just go buy one that's running in good condition because this has been a huge amount of time and a huge amount of effort. And to be honest, if I was to put an hourly rate on this, being such an early motor and matching numbers to the fire truck. Hopefully this will all pay off in the end in putting all this effort into this block, head, cylinders, the whole lot. So, yeah, it's going to be worth it in the end. It just seems like it's taken me a long time and a lot of effort. Anyway, at the end of the day, someone's going to get themselves a really nice truck with basically a new freshened up motor. So, happy days for them for probably a couple of hours now, just working my way through it, cleaning it all out, checking it, seeing how it looks. I did have all this full of uh, rust remover. I emptied all that out, I flushed all this block out again, and the stuff that came out, it was incredible. So I know that the inside of the block now is all nice and clean and clear, which is really good. So I'm just gonna spend a little bit more time honing them. It's pretty much, it's pretty much spot on. I'm really, really happy with some of them. The cross hatching has come up pretty good. I, I'm actually really impressed with the way the cross hatching has come up. I try and take some photos and put it in there so I actually see it. The uh, number three bore is probably a little bit off because that was the one that was the worst out of the lot where we knocked it out. There's a little bit of pitting in there, um, but I think it should be okay. So I've gone this far, it's worth finishing it off. A little bit more honing and then we're done so that's pretty much it i can't really show you guys much more because it's just going to get pretty boring for you guys i'm sure it already has been a bit boring because the continuous amount of work that this mode has taken but again i really appreciate you guys tuning in supporting the channel uh yeah feel free to leave a comment i'll take some photos put them up for the finished result but until next time take care of yourselves